Hey everybody, what's going on? It's your boy Burkron88 coming in with another YouTube video. And today we're going to be talking about AP. I've had a couple of people ask me about AP uh, ability points and how I use them, which ones I use, and why which ones I prefer over others. So I'm going to look at AP, kind of explain it a little bit, hopefully it helps out, and why I use the ones I use where. Now when it comes to this, guys, everybody has to you know fashion their own opinion off of how they play what they enjoy using and and what benefits their game so don't take anyone's individual opinion and say this is how i gotta do it if something i'm saying may help you give it a try if you find success with something else put that in the comment section down below because i'd love to hear it and i always down to try new things if you do like the video guys give it a thumbs up hit that sub button down below and the notification bell so you don't miss any content in the future but let's get into this ap Okay, so AP or ability points, you're going to see it in the top right, right under your overall and coin count. It goes up, it seems to be going up by five every month. So in, in four weeks, three, four weeks, we'll have 65 AP. Now how to spend it is different based on how you want to play and how you enjoy playing. First off, I put AP on my first two lines on forward and my first two lines on defense because they play the most ice time and those are usually the guys that I have on my power play and my penalty kill. So that's that's where I put all my AP points. I, I don't want to get caught having Claude Giroux AP points and he plays six minutes a game because that's a waste. So I just, my first two lines, Lemieux, Holik, Yager, McKinnon, Gretzky, McDavid, that's where I'll spend my AP points. Sometimes I will not without moving the lines back and forth I will take everything off my second line and put it to my third line because it's an all leaf team and, and I love using the boys So if I feel like I'm just going to aggressively just pump the leafs I'll switch it out and instead of switching the lines I'll just switch the AP and how you do that is you press triangle or Y on Xbox and that'll bring up this menu and You there is an argument for AP on a goalie the only reason I have it on Marc-Andre Fleury right now is because I just built him today. I was testing him out on stream. And when I'm testing a goalie out, I like to give him his fullest potential. And I put everything on his uh, his AP. Not recommended. I didn't get a chance to build him all the way up because I don't I didn't have the, the collectibles to do that. So we have him at a 92. All of his AP. We're trying him out. After a day of streaming with him, I don't recommend him. He, uh... He, he plays bad. But anyway, we're not going to talk about Marc-Andre Fleury. We're going to talk about AP. When it comes to gold AP or silver AP, or the actual term for them, the gold AP is zone ability, and the silver AP is superstar ability. But you'll hear people all the time say gold elite edges or silver elite edges. That's what they're referring to. The difference in the two is one is always active, and the other one activates, we'll say, 50% of the time, which I don't really think it's 50% of the time. I think the way it's worded is it's... It has a chance of activating. So when it comes to what type of ability points I like, Unstoppable Force is a great one. At the start of the year, Elite Edges and Wheels is always great. Uh, as the cards have been progressing, I feel like I want other things. So like, for instance, Yarmor Yager is like 95 speed or whatever. I don't know, I don't have the exact number, but I don't feel like I need Wheels on him. And his agility is in high 90s as well. So I don't feel like I need Elite Edges. Could it help? Yes. But I feel like unstoppable force and close quarters helps me more than elite edges would. When it comes to the difference between gold and silver, yes, one's always activated. One has a chance of activating, but one has a cost of 50% less. So unstoppable force here you will see is eight because it's gold. And if we go over to Gretzky, it's four because it's silver. Again, one is always activated and one is half. So unstoppable force is something I really, I really do enjoy. And as you can tell, close quarters is as well. And then when it comes to another one that I really like to use is truculence. Defense, forward, anything. If they have truculence and I have the extra points, I love to put truculence on cards. It really helps get physical, knock people off the puck. And I really feel like it's a, it's a great addition. But this year seems to be just truculence bound for everything. If you don't have a team full of truculence guys, it's just, it's it, it's getting silly out there. It really is. Because it's 6 AP, you can get 10 guys with truculence. And like I said, that's your first two lines of forwards and your first two lines of defense. So you're always facing truculence. And in the higher divisions, you get all the big bodies with that on it. And it's just it, almost impossible to move. But truculence is a very good AP to have. Now, if you do have centermen and you like quick draw, that's fine because of how broken faceoffs are. And uh, it almost feels like you can have 99 faceoffs and hit the right counter and you still lose the draw. So 
effective for winning tie-ups is quick draw in your defensive zone but that's really nice because your defensive zone loss can cost you so much on a tie-up people will take the tie-up and they'll bring their winger off the boards whether it be right or left they'll cut across the middle and they'll shoot it on net and it's a snipe in the top corner if that happens to you maybe try quick draw because it it, it, it it's a catch-22 with this game whether you take the whistle and you get scored on that way or you throw the puck out but with the delay of the goalie you get dunked on by throwing the puck out so it's kind of a catch-22 and it sucks it's where we're at and quick draw might be a nice counter for you and it's not like i don't like elite edges it's not like i don't like shutdown or heat seeker or wheels stick them up seeing eye i'm not I'm, I'm not saying that all these are bad ability points there is a place for all of them no contest there is a place for all of them it's just unstoppable force close quarters and truculence in my opinion are the three that dominate nhl 23 right now and as we get more and more ability points i'll bring up later whether or not i run nine forwards with uh, with ability points or if i just start stacking heavier and heavier on my top six because you you want to have the most out of the guys that play the most right like this line right here yager holik lemieux 25 minutes a game and for that 25 minutes you want the best out of them you can get now ones like born leader you can run it if you want i don't recommend it this late in the year with like how stacked my team is endurance isn't really something i'm worried about right like if this first line gets tired i go to my second or my third i don't need to use ap points on born leader now if you have a weaker back end that might be something you can still look at where if you score with a guy on that line your line gets full energy but that that's just a quick rundown guys of how i use my ap what i use it on and which ones i prefer at this stage in the game that's the beautiful thing about abilities throughout the year it'll change and i don't think truculence is going anywhere but i'm i'm curious to see a month from now which ability pops up as the new one that's uh, irritating people if you will so thank you guys that's uh, that's my take on ability points and again hit me in the comment section below with your take on ability points because i'm really curious what you guys think i do hope this video helped and until next time guys ciao ciao